for time. The higher the stakes, the more interesting the game. But does greed switch off reason at some point? And how important is it to end up with more than the other players? Emotionally charged decisions aren't only common at the gaming table. They seem to govern the world of finance as well. Yes! 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 <laughs> Brain researcher Christian Elger is trying to pinpoint the effect of money on the mind. He has established a relatively new academic discipline in Germany. It's known as neuroeconomics. Elger looks at people's brains while they're engaging in financial activities, and he already has some interesting results. Money is the critical factor. We have a reward center in our brains. When it's activated, it gives us an incredibly positive feeling, like nothing can top this. Money activates this system in a massive way. So constantly dealing with money in a profit-making situation leads to behavior similar to addiction. The two test subjects meet again for an unusual kind of duel. This time, they're not gambling against each other. Instead, each has to solve the same problem. For the first time in Europe, this is being done using two brain scanners simultaneously. Their brain waves are being recorded as they solve the problem and are awarded a sum of money. The trick is that one subject will receive more than the other. The experiment can begin. The aim is to correctly estimate the number of points. Are there more or less than indicated? Who received which reward is ultimately revealed to the test subjects. What bothered the subject about this experiment? Did he notice something? Yeah, we pushed the button at the same time, but he got twice as many points as I did. We were both right, but he got twice as many points. I couldn't understand that. I think it's a bit, uh, well, it's not good at all. This disappointment is immediately reflected in the subject's brain activity. The researchers can see it in the data they've recorded. Here we see there's one part of the brain that's really active. It's called the ventral striatum. It's basically the core of what's known as the reward system. For starters, this system is activated when I get something, anything at all, in comparison to a situation in which I receive nothing. And we find that the strength of the activation also depends on what the other gets. When the other gets more than I do, then the activation in my brain is weaker than when I'm the one who's getting more. With their data, the neurologists have been able to disprove an economic theory that says that the same reward always has the same effect, regardless what others are earning. It's actually the other way around. Comparison with the other subject's gains is more important than the absolute sum. In addition, the more active the reward center in the brain, the less rational thinking seems to play a role. Could corporate executives' brains be analyzed like this in the future? My vision is that within a decade, business directors will have to supply genetic profiles and maybe have to undergo a scan. Then the combination of data could be used to work up a risk profile. It would say to the managers, you may be good, but you're very risky. So what we'll do is give you a controller or a partner who will try to keep the risk to a minimum. Then you're the right person for us. Neuroeconomics is still a young discipline, combining neurobiology, psychology and economics. But it could help make financial markets safer in the future and turn investing into a slightly less risky activity than throwing dice.